It's Christmas time again, which means it's time for Maker's Secret Santa. 12 makers have got together, randomly drawing a name from the hat and making something for each other. The whole thing goes round in a big circle so you can watch all the videos and follow the whole thing around in a big loop. This year the makers that took part are Colin Furs, The Hacksmith, Adam Savage's Tested, Look Mum No Computer, This Old Tony, Kids Invent Stuff, Thea Ulrich, Becky Stern, Zyla Foxlin, Estefany, Alan Pan Sufficiently Advanced, and me! Last year I had to make something for the Hacksmith, but this year I got Adam Savage's Tested. I've also received a gift from one of the other makers, which I'll be unwrapping later in the video. But the pressure's on to make something amazing for Tested. The channel's pretty diverse, with multiple presenters, amazing builds, product reviews, and of course Adam Savage himself. So I guess I've got to make something that stands out, either because it's technically brilliant or aesthetically amazing. Or I could just make something a bit weird. One of the weirdest robots I could find on YouTube was the Utterance robot, built by Kagawa University. The robot mimics human sounds by squashing a rubber mouth and tongue, and opening and closing its nasal cavity. Quite a few years of research have gone into this, but I'm hoping to attempt the hacky version. I also came across a kind of manual version called Kemplin's Speaking Machine, which uses a bellow driving an artificial larynx and mouth to make human sounds. I'm going to need a soft squashy mouth and tongue, so I'm going to make a 3D printed mould and cast silicon into it. I'm going to be casting a tube, so I've got two mould halves and a mould core. I've also got various removable parts like these metal pins which are going to make screw holes, and those are removable so that silicon doesn't get cast around them, and then the rubber piece gets locked in the mould. The whole thing screws together with some screws, and I'm also sealing up all of the gaps in the mould here with tape, and making sure it's all clamped together nice and tight so silicon doesn't just ooze out of it. So we're just going to cover up all the seam lines there and make sure that it's pretty watertight before we try and cast into it. I'm using a short A hardness silicon rubber which is pretty soft and I've also got flesh coloured pigment although I decided that was a step too far. This is a platinum cure silicon rubber so you mix equal parts of A and B which I'm weighing out there and I've calculated the mould volume from the CAD in Fusion 360 so I know exactly how much to mix up. To make sure it's mixed properly I'm going to mix it in one container and try and mix it as best I can, but to make sure none of it gets stuck around the edges of unmixed silicon I'm going to pour all of that into another container and scrape all around the edges and then mix that in a second container and that just makes sure it's mixed properly and none of the first part is stuck around the edges. So now we can pour that into the mould cavity which is actually very narrow and this is quite a thick liquid as you can see. So what should happen is I'd fill the mould and put it in a vacuum chamber to suck all the air out to stop air bubbles. But I don't have a vacuum chamber so the best I can really do here is kind of try and slosh it around to make sure that any air gets released and poke things down there to try and release any air bubbles and fill it up in stages and just hope that we don't end up with a massive air lock in some feature of the mould the results in a massive cavity of air that won't cast properly. So that's going to take some time to kind of poke it in, poke long sticks down, swish it round, bang it on the table, and hope for the best. Once that's all set up, one half of the mould came off really easily, and we can see we've got a pretty good cast. So there's no massive air bubbles or anything like that, so it seems that my strategy of Swishing it round has worked pretty well, however the other half seems to be completely locked in and I can't get that out. I tried to remove the mould core first, which probably should have been made um, in some way where it's collapsible. So having destroyed some of the mould, I still couldn't get that out or get the other half out of the mould. So I ended up clamping it in a vise and sticking a screwdriver in and using brute force to pull out the silicon cast. And you can see it's locked in there by the base, which I actually deliberately put into this piece so I can screw it down. But eventually I managed to get it out in one piece and it's all looking pretty good. Apart from the mould core is still stuck in, which took me some time to remove. 
But in the end, everything's come out and there's no air bubbles, so I'm pretty happy with that. So we can see that's the front of the mouth, which we should be able to manipulate. We've got a hole for the nasal cavity and various other features. I've got a Bluetooth speaker that I'm just going to shove in the back. And I've got some sounds I'm playing from Ableton on my laptop. So now we can manipulate the mouth and see if it makes any difference to the sound. So just blocking and unblocking the hole that goes to the nasal cavity, we can see that we can alter the tone of the sound quite a bit. So, so far I'm feeling pretty hopeful. I also cast the tongue, and this time I did use the flesh-coloured pigment, so now we have a nice rubbery tongue, and that's got some holes in so we can manipulate it within the mouth. And that's nice and floppy, so it should do its job. Those holes correspond with holes in the bottom of the mouthpiece, and eventually they'll be actuated with servos with rods that stick up through the mechanism. And that of course fits just in there, and looks like a lovely licky tongue that should hopefully help us alter the sounds. So we now need to print the mechanical parts for the rest of the mechanical assembly that's going to support the mouth and tongue and all of the mechanical actuation. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting me with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printed projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I need to screw the silicon rubber piece to the rest of the 3D prints, so I've got these kind of runners each side that stop the screws pulling through, so we can clamp that down nice and securely. The nasal passage is another 3D printed box that fits on the top, and that goes into a specific hole that I made in the silicon rubber piece. And you'll notice I've got these little tabs that I pushed in here, and these match the pieces that were removable from the mould when I made it. And that allows me to screw that in all the way round so it's nice and securely fixed in and it doesn't flop down. It's screwed on at the front as well, although I didn't bother with the plastic tabs, maybe I should have. But I think that's going to be fine just to hold it in place. There's not really going to be much load on it. The rest of the structure is made up with two side pieces that screw onto the two yellow parts, so that should hold everything in place. And here it is. So there's our mouth, our nasal cavity, and we've got a space below to put some servos and various other things. I left the option for various different nose shapes, but I'm pretty happy with this one and it looks like a pair of nostrils, so hopefully that will do. There's another base piece with three servos on to actuate the bottom of the lip at the front and also the tongue shape internally within the mouth. And I'm just controlling everything with an Arduino Mega and I've got a bank of switches which are going to be to activate different mouth shapes. So I've got quite a lot of options there with a big bank of switches on the keyboard. I've added some more servos on the side to push and pull the mouth sides as well and program those for some positions. So as I press the switches it changes the mouth shape and you can probably see the servos moving in the bottom as well which are there to actuate the tongue shape. At the moment all of those operate independently, but I'll probably put various combinations together. When the tongue moves up at the back it actually blocks the nasal cavity passage, which if you remember comes from a hole in the back of the silicon rubber. So that should work pretty well to alter the tone as we tested before. Well, as you can see, this doesn't really work very well at all, so I guess years of research in a university kind of outweighs something I made in a couple of weeks. Well, I suppose that just goes to show how hard it is to make an artificial human mouth that makes the same sound as a human, but we need it to work, so I'm going to cheat completely with a bit of movie magic. <laughs> Thank you.
But who's left this weird bicycle on my driveway with one wheel covered in a black bin bag? And some tinsel. What's this? It's a really weird wheel on a bicycle. Only one wheel, mind. So it looks like there's lots of feet all the way around and some sort of central hub. And it says the J Bouton wheel on it. And it also says made above ground in really big writing. But who'd have made such a thing? Right, let's do some more digging. <laughs> Not in these clothes. <laughs> yes, of course, it was the almighty Colin Furs. So the idea behind this is there's lots of feet that can step over objects and climb up and down them and you'll notice that central hub tipping up and down hill so that it aligns all the bearings on the other end of the legs and they all slope in the right direction. And originally I made four of these and put them on a four wheel drive vehicle so I could test this out and I found the idea from a really old pattern. But now it's on a bicycle! <laughs> So being something Colin made, of course it's made of metal which makes it extremely heavy, it's a really heavy ride. It's alright going downhill once you get up to speed, but coming uphill my legs turned to gingerbread and I couldn't hold on to my selfie stick. But if you want to see how Colin made this in detail then check it out in his channel and check what he got from another maker. So I'm going to put the link to all of the 12 makers in the description to this video. And if you want to see what tested make of this, head over to their channel to see what happens when they unbox it and see what they're making for another channel.